take time to be holy. Speak up with thy Lord. Abide in him always. And feed on his word. Make friends of God's children. Help those who are weak. Forgetting in nothing. His blessing to see. Take time to be holy. The world rushes on. Spend much time in secret with Jesus alone. By looking to Jesus, like him thou shalt be. Thy friends in thy conduct, his likeness shall see. Take time to be holy. Let him be thy guide. And run not before him, whatever be time. In joy or in sorrow, still follow thy Lord. And looking to Jesus, still trust in his word. Take time to be holy, be calm in thy soul. Each thought and each temper beneath his control. Thus, led by his spirit, the fountains of love, thou shalt soon be fitted for service aboard. Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the word you have sent to us at this moment. You want us to endure to everlasting life. You don't want us to turn away. And that's why you're giving us this information to walk on in our lives. Both men and women, young and old, the members and the leaders worship you, Father. I thank you because your word to dwell in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. You can be seated. Some people believed on the Lord Jesus Christ when he preached to them among others. And Jesus gave them the secret of continuing in him. Why? He does not want anyone to backslide. He does not want anyone to be stunted. So, I also don't want anyone as a lover of Jesus, as a leader, of a holiness revival movement and a preacher of the gospel, I don't want anyone to backslide or to become spiritually arrested. Hence, I'm delivering to you the message, reasons for spiritual dryness and backsliding. Reasons for spiritual dryness and backsliding. In John chapter 8, verse 30 to 32, and um, the Bible says, as he spake these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if ye continue in my world, then I hear my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You see, he wants you to continue. He wants you to know the truth and enjoy spiritual freshness. He wants you to continue to the saving of your life. In Hebrews, Chapter 10, 
There, the Lord through the apostle Paul wrote saying, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 37 to 39. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now, the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. That is what the Lord is saying. And now, the apostle continued as we chorus with him in verse 39. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. God brought you to a movement like this. Worldwide movement of holiness. Many of you, when you came in, testify, I have discovered treasure. I will not go back from this place. You said, this is my last bus stop. I'm dropping here. I have no other place to go. I have come to where I will eat and drink of the love of God, of the word of God until I enter heaven. Good. I desire, as the Lord does, that you should not go into spiritual bankruptcy. You should not go into spiritual dryness. You should not backslide. You should not turn back, turn away. It is my desire, as it is the Lord's. The grace you have obtained to be a real Christian and a true believer in Christ is a great grace. Why? Many in the world don't know this truth. Don't know this way. The way they serve God is not the right way. They are not aware of the power of Jesus, efficacy of his word, of his blood. They are not aware of the life-changing power of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ. They are not aware of the life of righteousness and holiness. They are not aware, but come, you have got this thing. What a great grace. Goodness of God. Kindness of God. You have discovered actually. Yes, wonderful. Your faith in Christ has granted you salvation from sin and holiness of life. It is a precious faith. Good. I'm so happy you are born again. You are sanctified, as cleansed, such that your heart is righteous. Your heart is holy. You live every day in the fear of God. You don't commit sin. This is wonderful. Your fellowship among true believers serve to preserve your faith. You have discovered Holiness Revival Movement as a body of true believers. And this is blessing your life. It's keeping you in righteousness. Encouraging you. You are not the only one in the journey. In fact, you are among us as a learner. They are teaching you. They are showing you both by word and by practical example, how to live the beautiful Christian life, the heaven worthy life. Hence, do all to maintain fellowship with these people that you have seen as an example of righteousness. For the Bible tells us in 2 Timothy, Chapter 2, 
verse 22. It says, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22. Flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. With them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. That is the group you discover. That is the body of Christ you discover. Them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. It is a treasure. Some of you, it is as you came across this body that you became born again. Some, you came to know real truth. You came to be really free from sin. In fact, you came to the perfect Christian life. The holy Christian life. So, do, do all to maintain fellowship with this Blessed people, he that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. You were a companion of fools before you came across this body, and you know what you suffered then. Now you have come to liberty, you have come to freshness of life. Don't do those things that will send you to spiritual dryness. Even among us. Don't do anything that will send you to backsliding. Even among us. In fact, that will make you leave this congregation. The Bible tells us in 1 John chapter 1. I read verse 1 to verse 6. That which was from the beginning, which we have seen, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it. And bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father, and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you, that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ his son cleanseth us from all sin. This scripture shows we have known him. That which was from the beginning. We have understood him. That which was from the beginning. We have received him. That eternal life that was with the Father. We're talking about Jesus. We are acquainted with the living Jesus. We are serving the living Jesus. We have experienced him. We have him in us. Yes. Now, that which we have and assure of, we declare unto you. So that you may have fellowship with us. Concerning us, we say truly, our fellowship is with the Father. And with Jesus Christ, his Son, we are sure. As you come in here, you observe our fellowship, our relationship, our worship. There's nothing that is evil here. There's no sign of evil here. No. We are righteous. We order ourselves in righteousness. We ensure we do not grieve the Holy Spirit. The leadership over us 
ensures that we are orderly in, uh, in our activities, in our worship. Let all things be, things be done decently and in order. That's what we do. So that when you come in, you come in as the queen of Sheba. The queen that came to visit Solomon and saw the orderliness of the people with Solomon in the presence of Solomon and saw the worship that was being carried out by Solomon and the people of Israel. He, she said, the half of this thing was not told me. Truly, the Lord is in our midst. The Lord is in your midst and is great. I can see beauty. I can see glory. So that's how it is. Our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. Then, what message do we have? We preach righteousness here. We preach the truth here. We preach and practice it. We, in, we preach the God of righteousness. That God is light. In him, there's no darkness at all. No sin. No lie. No treachery. In him, there's no darkness at all. So we don't practice darkness here. We don't give testimonies of lies here. No, encourage them. No. We don't. So, that is what we make you to know. And that if any man says he is in the light with, with us, and walks in darkness. He's a liar. He is a liar. Yes. The truth is not in him. We will not accord such one our fellowship. Because the Bible says, if anyone says he's a believer, but is a thief, covetous, idolater, witch, wizard, or whatever it is, a sinner, have nothing to do with him. No, not to it. Cast out such an one. Let him go and meet with the devil to commit sin because he's the father of liars. Why should he be telling lies and deceiving people among us that he's a Christian when he is not? Not that he's a nominal one that is coming to look for Jesus. Coming to look for the word of God for perfection. Those ones are different. I'm talking about ones who profess we're already Christians. Maybe they're even leaders and workers, but are found to be liars. So, this is the assembly you have found, which God himself approves. Because he said, you have this good thing among you, that you have proved them who say they are apostles, but you have found them liars. God likes that. So, and as you come in here with fellowship together, we move together. We increase in righteousness and holiness before God. This is what the Lord wants us to do and how he wants us to live. But I want to say, many people lose active faith in Christ and discontinue fellowship with the true people of God. What is the reason? Or else you are here, you are spiritually dry, you are not advancing, something has arrested you. What is that which arrested you? What practice did you go into or do you go into that has brought you to spiritual dryness? That is now putting you at a state of backsliding. I'm going to give you seven. Seven things you need to know and overcome, avoid, pray against so that you don't go into spiritual dryness and backsliding, even in a holy church. Number one, tons in your life. Tons. T-H-O-R-N. Thorns in your life. In Matthew chapter 13, I read verse 7. Matthew 13, 
verse 7. The Bible says, And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. The thorns sprang up and choked them. Mark chapter 4, verse 7. Mark chapter 4, verse 7. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. Can you see? Yielded no fruit. Spiritual dryness. Choked them. They became spiritually dry. And backslide and die. We die away. Tons are grass that have sharp pointed teeth. When they are formed, the teeth are tender and weak and cannot pierce through any object. But these teeth get stronger as they grow, as they grow up. At maturity, the teeth are sharp, strong, and unbending. At this stage, they pierce through the plant near it and destroys it. Makes it unfruitful. Can you see? Tons. Tons. In a believer's life may refer to any bad habit or character which may not harm him in the beginning of his faith. Any bad practice. At the time you are growing up in your faith, you, you ignore it. You ignore it. It's just like a child stammering. And at the beginning it is ignored because it's not looking serious. But as the child is growing, the stammering becomes prominent. As he grows up to adulthood, the stammering now comes to be affecting the child's life seriously. That is how it is. It means there are some habits in your life. They were there. You ignored getting rid of them. Because, of course, you are still a Christian. You still go and praise the Lord. You still read your Bible. You still preach. You still do this. But these things were there. In you, by you. You ignored them. But as they grow up with you, along with you, they reach a stage in which those weak teeth become strong teeth. Unbending teeth. They pierce through you. Your Christian life comes on in. Gradually you just see yourself weakening, weakening, weakening. And before you know it, it could be backsliding. Tons. So, you note that. This gives you reason for spiritual dryness and backsliding. What could these tons be? It could be eating habit, just normal food. The way you hunt after food. The way you behave towards food. Of course you eat. How, do you what is spirituality inside? But as you grow up, it becomes an abuse in your life. It's a character you couldn't put off. It has become an abuse in your life. Inability to control your eating. The eating frequency. You couldn't. Now it has affected your fasting life. You are a Christian. You cannot fast. Why? You're not able to keep from food. It was a practice. 
You could have disciplined yourself against, or it could be sleeping. Little thing you want to go and lie down. Little thing you go and lie down until sleep has overpowered you. You can't do devotion again. You can't rise up and pray as Christians do. You can't even prevail in prayer. Sleep has overcome. When it started, you didn't learn how to wake up yourself, shake yourself, and say, no, you can't take over me. You didn't do that. You were weak. Of course, you continue your Christian life. You didn't feel anything, but now they have arrested you. You can't do anything meaningful. Prayer is absent or badly affected in your life because there were tons before. You didn't do anything to get the tongue arrested. It could be talkativity. You could talk. Bark, 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 bark. You could talk, but there was, a, there was a check in your spirit. Stop this, your much talking. Stop this, your much talking. Until now, you can't stop anymore. You can't stop anymore. You, you are looking for people to talk to. Uh, you must be talking because you learn it. You allowed it. You couldn't control it. You couldn't cope this habit. It has become, it has become what is eating away your Christian life. And in a, ma in a multitude of words, they lack it no sin. You are sinning every day. The holiness of life has become a problem because of your talking nature. Oh, what else? It could be jesting. Always wanting to make people laugh. Always wanting to make people laugh. These things were tones. At first, it didn't affect you. It didn't affect you. You were still a Christian, still there. Yes, but now it's affecting you. Lies are coming into it. You add to words to make people laugh. Because that ingredient of making people laugh, it has become a profession now. You are always thinking how to make people laugh. And you go into jesting that are not convenient. These things could have been caught, controlled. In the time you were growing, you didn't do it. It's affecting you. Or maybe they're starting now. Do something about them. Do something about them. In First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 22 to 24. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 22 to 24. The Bible says, abstain from all appearance of evil. And the very God of peace sanctify you holy. And I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. As you see a small sign of sin, an unwholesome habit getting formed in your life, the thorns are growing. The thorns have been planted by you. Remove them abstain reject them get them out get them out you you love being in the midst of men although you are a woman you are a woman but you love to sit among men you didn't check that character you didn't check it it was a turn now you grew up is your friends are men your friends are men. You are married. You're, you are looking for men too to still be your friends. It's now a problem. It used not to be a problem when you were not married. But it is now a problem because you are provoking your husband to jealousy. Can you see that? So abstain from all appearance of evil. Ask God to sanctify you so that your heart should be clean. Every spot and every wrinkle should get off from your life. That's what God says. Again in Psalm 119 verse 60. Psalm 119, I read verse 60. The Bible says, 
verse 60. I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments. Please, don't delay. That thing will grow to the point of greater strength. It, be, it will become unbending and sharp and pierced through if you give it time. So settle that thing very fast. Wipe out that evil character very fast. Then your tomorrow will be bright in Jesus' name. The second thing is ungodly friends. Ungodly friends. In the book of 2 Samuel chapter 13, I read verse 1 to verse 4. 2 Samuel chapter 13, verse 1 to verse 4, the Bible says, And it came to pass after this that Absalom the son of David had a fair sister whose name was Tamar. And Amnon, the son of David, loved her. And Amnon was so vexed that he fell sick for his sister Tamar. For she was a virgin. And Amnon thought it hard for him to do anything to her. But Amnon had a friend whose name was Jonadab. The son of Shimei, David's brother. And Jonadab was a very subtle man. And he said unto him, Where art thou being the king's son? Lean from day to day. Will thou not tell me? And Ab Amnon said unto him, I love Tamar, my brother, Absalom's sister, for immorality. That is it. And this person... The Bible describes Abnon's friend in verse 3. And Abnon had a friend whose name was Jonadab, the son of Shemaiah, David's brother. And Jonadab was a very subtle man. A very subtle man. Wise and cunning in evil. He knows how to train you in evil. He knows what, how to inspire you in evil. That was Shemaiah. As a Christian, you had many ungodly friends, or few, precious ones, when you were a sinner. Some of these were the same sex with you, and some of opposite sex. As a man, you had both men and women as close friends. You inspired each other to commit sin. You committed sins. Also with each other. You had a girlfriend. You had a boyfriend. And you were committing sin. With each other. Now. By that. The first layer. Has been removed. It's like. You have bleached off. The first layer. When you commit immorality. With a woman. The first layer. Has been bleached out. The first layer, that's the resisting part of it. It's like you use bleach and bleach away your skin. The, the top skin. It becomes easier the next time to commit immorality with that person. Even if she gets married. If you lighted a, a, a lamp and the, light, the lamp burned and you blew off the lamp. It is very easy to light it a second time. In a short time. Is that so? Immediately you come closer and strike the match. What will happen? It will, the light will just catch. That is what happens to a lady you have slept with. When you were in the world. Picking her up after 30 years is not difficult. In fact, even if she's married to another man. Yes, the man you slept with when you were in sin, although you are now a mature woman, there, there is familiarity. The first layer of unfamiliarity has been removed. When you meet to, with each other, you talk freely. You laugh. You remember your jesting. You quickly jump into it and move natural. If you can spend a little more time with each other. So you know this 
Where is important knowledge? Now in Christ, you are to dissociate with them and keep them at far distance. Dissociate and keep them at far distance because they have quicker access to you and to influence you than any other new man on the street that you come across in life. They are your friends. They don't have resistance. They don't have anything checking them. Immediately they see you, they move. Because you are already used to each other. And remember, remember, some of these were coarse jesters. They will talk and make you laugh. They are still so. They have not changed. They are still sinners. And the way they were talking and making you laugh then, they can still do it now. With weights, those same weights, those same manner, by those same spirit, they, are still, they can still do it now. Again, remember, some of them were immoral or are immoral. You knew them. Either fellow men with you, how you used to call women together, arrange women together. He has arranged for you, you have arranged for him. And that spirit is still there. Or else you did it together with the woman or with the man. You did it together. So that immoral spirit, immoral mind is still in that person. It's you who say you have been saved. Are they saved? No. So they're still in their sin. They're still in their state. And remember, some of them are cunning in evil, like Jonadab. Very intelligent in connecting evil. Very wise in getting somebody and in, into evil. You know them. Again, remember that some of them were consulted with familiar spirits. You were going to idol worship together to get charm. You moved together with them to get charm. And you know he's still a charmer. He's still somebody who, is, who can use charm to influence people's life. Up to now, he's still the same person. He's still the same person. Who can use charm to influence people's life, to change people's direction? You didn't... Oh, you have forgotten? That's the same, the same man. You grew up together with him as a friend. You, were you not also in the party? Same party. Again, of course, you should know that some of them were witches and some wizards. To continue close relationship with them is to lose your faith. It's a, it's a, it's a terrible thing. To come again and still be working with these people. What's the danger? Number one, you will provoke the Lord to anger. You may be thinking, ah, but what am I? I, I no, I, 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 I like him. In fact, I like He loves me. But I've told you his character. I've told you how, how he is. He's still the way he was. So, you will provoke the Lord to anger against you. Why? He said, have no fellowship with unfruitful work of darkness. Why? He said, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. What part has righteousness with unrighteousness? What concord has Christ with Belial? What part has he that believed with an infidel? An unbeliever. That's what he said. That's what the Lord said. Now that you broke this commandment and are getting among them, that is what happened. Your God is angry. And remember, this is the God that keeps you fresh spiritually. Spiritual dryness will come to you. You will lose your spiritual freshness because the things you will be hearing the, the jokes you will be hearing. Again, number two, you will expose yourself to sinful temptation and pleasure. Because this one was giving you pleasure before. 
In fact, this was the one who even teach you how to sleep with a man. He was even the one that teach you. He was the one that disvergent you. He's even the one that taught you how to sleep with a woman. He was the one that was always available for you and made you to be who you were in sin. But you are still getting closer. You're getting interested. You are going to be lured into temptation. Your hearts you will not even, your heart will be corrupted. You will not even know when you have started speaking the language of yesterday. Because you are in the presence where such language should be spoken. It will come out, even almost automatically. Almost automatically, it will just issue out of your mouth. So, number three, you will make yourself close to Satan to attack and destroy your faith. She is a witch. He is a wizard. He is a charmer. He knows how to use charm. You mean this man cannot use charm on you? You mean this man cannot consult his powers on you? To twist you? To influence you? To weaken you? Because even he himself is interested to have you. But this your profession of Christianity is a disturbance. Is the reason why things are not flowing the way he wants. He cannot change you. Can he not go to the witch doctor to help him? You expose yourself to Satan. Again, they may pull you back to sin. Dinah went to visit the children of the land that didn't know God. She didn't come back free. She was polluted. You are going to be among unbelievers and say, these were my classmates, these were this, and you're dealing very closely with them. We are not saying that you don't deal with them at all. Yes, familiarity is there, but let there be a great God fixed. That he that will cross from here to there cannot, and he that will cross from there here cannot. But you can talk. You can relate in that distance. You can relate in that distance such that there is no closeness and fervency in the relationship. Otherwise, this righteousness will stop on the way. Your life will come down. Your faith will collapse. And God doesn't want that. And we also don't want that. We don't want you to, one day I am no more in holiness movement. What happened? Uh, I couldn't, in fact, sin has come back. No, we don't want that. That's why we're telling you these things. So, take note of them. That's what God wants you to understand. Now, number three, hearing means voice. I'm telling you what causes backsliding. What causes spiritual dryness and withdrawal from the body of believers? What can even remove you from a holy church? Hearing means voice. In the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 24, verse 1 to verse 12, 1 Samuel, chapter 24, Verse 1 to verse 12. And it came to pass when Saul was returned from following the Philistines that it was told him saying, Behold, David is in the wilderness of Engedi. Then Saul took 3,000 chosen men out of all Israel and went to seek David and his men upon the rocks of the wild gods. And they came to the sheep courts by the way where was a curve and Saul went in to cover his feet and David and his men remained in the sides of the curve. And the men of David said unto him Behold the day of which the Lord said unto thee Behold I will deliver thine enemy into thine hand that thou mayest do to him as it shall seem good unto thee. Then David arose and cut off the skate of Saul's robe privily 
And it came to pass afterward that David had smote him because he had cut off Saul's head. And he said unto his men, The Lord forbid that I should do this thing unto my master, the Lord's anointed, to stretch forth mine hand against him, seeing he is the anointed of the Lord. So David stayed his servants with these words and suffered them not to rise against Saul. But Saul rushed up out of the cave and went on his way. David also arose afterward and went out of the cave and cried after Saul, saying, My Lord the king. And when Saul looked behind him, David stooped with his face to the earth and bowed himself. And David said to Saul, Wherefore hearest thou men's words, saying, Behold, David seeketh thy life. Behold this day, then eyes have seen how that the Lord hath delivered thee to, today into mine hand in the curve, and some bid me kill thee, but mine eyes spared thee. And I said, I will not put forth my hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. Moreover, my father, see, yeah, see the, the skate of thy robe in my hand. For in that I cut off the skate of thy robe and killed thee not. Know thou and see there is neither evil nor transgression in mine hand. And I have not sinned against thee, yet thou huntest my soul to take it. The Lord judge between me and thee, and the Lord avenge me of thee, but my hand shall not be upon thee. Yes, human beings are of different behavior, different kinds. There are bad ones who speak lies, gossip, slander, and all manner of evil, and give all manner of evil reports on people on things, on churches, on preachers. They can discourage and weaken your faith towards a preacher, a true preacher, an anointed preacher. They can weaken you by their tongue against a true church, a true fellowship, or a true Christian leader. They can tell you stories. They can tell you things. Learn to investigate carefully for yourself. Otherwise, you will sin against the Lord. You will remove yourself from that which is meant for your good. By the weights of men. Somebody called me from Canada. I think three days ago, where I had a talk with someone. He said, a lady... This lady who left the church recently and went about uh, uh, talking against the church told him because he bought land from the lady here in Abuja. Told him that people have left holiness movement. That the pe people have left, they've become scanty. The church, forget the glory has gone. Hey, he said, eh? You mean people have left Pastor Rica? People have left Mommy Linda. Uh, then I will have their time now. I was not having their time before because the people were too many around them. <laughs> now, now, anytime I call, I will find him. That's how he answered in his heart towards that person. But see the information. Which people have left? Which people have gone? Is she the one who left about two months or three months ago that has become all the people have gone? Where are you hearing men's voice that are coming to speak to you against your brother? Where are you hearing men's voice that are coming to speak to you evil against your sister to the point that you are discouraged? Now, they have faced the church. They have faced the man of God. 
they have fetched the woman of God to give you weights that will make you cancel righteousness and say oh, holiness doesn't exist. The people we think are holy are no more holy. Because those who were there that came from there, listen to what they are saying. Your hearing means voice. That's what David was telling Saul. You were with me in the curve. If I were hunting for you to kill you, as they told you, was it not cheaper for me to have killed you now? Was it not cheaper? Now, see. See the piece of cloth. I cut it from your, skirt, from your dress. Check your dress. You will find that a portion was cut off. And this is the portion here. When I did that, the Lord rebuked me. My heart smote me. I say, ah, don't do evil against the Lord's anointed. I have, even when some people were encouraging me, some were, were giving me prophecies that, I, that, whether they formulated it by themselves. I say, remember David, the Lord told you that he would give you your enemy into your hand, that you would do whatever you like. This is the day. David said, that is misapplied prophecy or manufactured prophecy. My heart says no to that. I cannot sin against God by hurting the Lord's anointed. Now, in as much as I caught the skate of your dress and did you no evil, God is witness. My heart is pure towards you. I seek not your heart, your heart, but you are hearing means voice. Is that not what you are hearing now that is discouraging you, with, discouraging you in holiness movement? You're hearing that they're driving away people. You're hearing that, hey, this is what is happening. You're hearing that, hey, this is what is happening. That's what is happening. And so, you run, be careful. Or you recoil. You recoil yourself. If I show zeal now, they will say, if I do this now, you recoil yourself and become spiritually dry. The things you used to do, happily, zealously in the church to keep the church inspired, keep you inspired as you are watering, the Lord is watering you. You have ceased doing those things now. And so you are dry. You are dry. You are not even praying for the church again. You are not even praying for the man of God again. Why? You say, what's the what benefit? What benefit? What am I getting? What is happening? My prayers, what is coming out of it? That's you have heart means voice. Be careful what you hear here. In the book of Acts of Apostles, chapter 28, Acts, chapter 28, I read verse 17 to 24. And it came to pass that after three days, Paul called the chief of the Jews together. And when they were come together, he said unto them, men and brethren, no, I have, I have committed nothing against the people or customs of our fathers. Yet was I delivered prisoner from Jerusalem unto the hands of the Romans, who when they had examined me would have let me go because there was no cause of death in me. But when the Jews spake against it, I was constrained to appeal unto Caesar. Not that I had ought to accuse my nation of. For this cause, therefore, have I called for you to see you and to speak with you. Because that for the hope of Israel, I am bound with this chain. And they said unto him, We neither received letters out of Judea concerning thee, neither any of the brethren, that came short or spoke any harm of thee. But we desire to hear, to hear of thee what thou thinkest. For as concerning this sect, we know that everywhere it is spoken against. I want you to take note of this. See how they were speaking against this sect everywhere. See how churches were speaking against this, they call it a sect. 
they called Christianity a sect in the days of Paul. And now they're calling this assembly a sect. And churches are speaking against it everywhere to stop people from benefiting for, from what the Lord is using this movement to do in this end time. They have branded it organization of the devil. Satan is the one there. They have said, they are only preaching pro prophecy, prophecy, prophecy. That's what they're saying. So by this, they have weakened the people. But look at these people here. Although we have had all this evil about this sect, we will hear you. Yes, we will hear you. To know what it is. Yes, and we, but we desire, verse 22, but we desire to hear of thee what thou thinkest for us concerning this sect. We know that everywhere it is spoken against. Verse 23, and when they had appointed him a day, there came many to him into his lodging to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus but out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets from morning till evening and some believed the things which were spoken how could these people believe if they didn't verify I'm telling you these things that they are saying about me this thing they are saying about the movement this thing they are saying about our sister Verify them for yourself, whether it is like that. Otherwise, the privilege of spiritual freshness, vitality, soundness, you will lose it because of hearing means voice. Now, number four, unbelief. Unbelief. In the book of Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1 to verse 7, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1 to verse 7. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that hear it. For we which have believed, do enter into rest. As he said, as I have sworn in my rod, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. Verse 7. Again, he limited a day, saying in David, today, after so long a time, as it is said, today, if ye will hear his voice, Harden not your heart. That is it. If ye will hear his voice, harden not your heart. Verse 6 said, Seeing therefore it remained not, um, it remained that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. Faith in God and in his word opens a door to spiritual freshness, vitality, soundness. Because faith opens the door for you to enter and enjoy abundance. That's what faith in God will do. It opens the door to spiritual fullness. The blessings of God come to us as we maintain the spirit of faith in him. In Romans chapter 1, verse 16 and 17, the Bible says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation, to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein, in the gospel of Christ. It's the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. 
you believe to have this you need to believe to have that you need to believe to have this the righteousness of god is revealed from faith to faith you need to have faith in god to have salvation you have to exercise another faith to have sanctification you have to exercise another faith to have baptism in the holy spirit you have to exercise another faith to have healing from your your sicknesses you have to exercise another faith to have blessings open door so in it the righteousness of god the blessings of god uh, is revealed from what faith to faith it's like a building having so many rooms and every room has a key to it you have to open this door with its right key to have access to what is in that room then what about the other room it's not automatic you have to have key also and that is faith faith opens this faith opens this faith opens this such that it is said the just shall live by faith can you now see faith is important by it the just lives when a person goes into unbelief over the revelations and mysteries of god he at the same time goes into spiritual dryness which will eventually lead to backsliding god reveals his righteousness in a particular way you say no i don't believe you don't believe then you cannot have access to the blessings there there are churches who don't believe in baptism in the holy spirit they are not baptized in the holy ghost are they no will the preacher be preacher and then the church holy ghost will fall upon the people no it is by faith and they don't have faith for it there are churches who don't believe in healing do they receive healing automatically in that church no because God deals with faith. From faith to faith. There are churches who don't believe in sanctification and holy living. Do they get sanctified? No. That is how it is. There are churches who don't believe that pray to God and get something. Do they get things from God there? No. There are churches who don't believe you can exercise power over devils, over witches and wizards, and overcome them. Do they overcome these things in their churches? No. Because the gospel of Christ is the gospel of faith. For therein in that gospel, the goodness of the Lord, the power of the Lord, the grace of the Lord manifests from faith faith to faith as it is written the just shall live by faith but you refuse the lord has sent revelations and prophetic word he said i don't take prophets i don't believe it you will suffer that which is required to quicken christianity of the end time according to the wisdom of the master soul winner you have rejected it you will suffer it in your life you will suffer it in your congregation that is it they have not entered in because of unbelief the same thing with you if you practice unbelief here over what we're telling you over what we are preaching because your hearing means voice is to your home you will not see spiritual freshness you will live in spiritual dryness you will backslide and tomorrow you won't be here tomorrow you will not be here you will withdraw and go you will have some stories to tell and join means voice wandering in the air wandering in the streets to discourage the name of jesus in people's life so be careful with unbelief rather be men of faith again ungodly wife ungodly husband ungodly wife ungodly husband in the book of Judges, chapter 6, 16 rather. 
I'm going to make a long reading from verse 4 all through to verse 21. Judges 16 from verse 4. And it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. And the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and said unto her, Entice him and see wherein his great strength lieth. And by what means we may prevail against him that we may bind him to afflict him and we will give the every one of us 1100 pieces of silver. And Delilah said to Samson, tell me, I pray thee, wherein thy great strength lieth and wherewith Thou mightest be bound to afflict thee. And Samson said unto her, If they bind me with seven green wits that were never dried, then shall I be weak and be as another man. Then the lords of the Philistines brought up to her seven green wits which had not been dried. And bound him with them. Now there, was, there were men lying in wait. Abiding with her in the chamber. And she said unto him. The Philistines be upon thee Samson. And he break the wits. As a trait of tau is broken when it touched the fire. So his strength was not known. Can you see? And Delilah continued with him. Samson, are you a fool? This woman talked and followed him with, with death. Death was standing by. You narrowly escaped. But the woman continued. Uh, verse 13. And Delilah said unto Samson, he that told thou hast mocked me and told me lies. Tell me wherewith thy, thou mightest be bound. And he said unto her, If thou wavest the seven locks of my head with the web. Let's take it, um, verse 16. Yeah, verse 16. And it came to pass. When she praised him daily with her words and urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death, that he told her all his heart and said unto her, There hath not come a razor upon my head, for I have been a Nazareth unto God for my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me and I shall become weak and be like any other man. And when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up now this once, for he had shot me all his heart. Then the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and brought money in their hands. Are you seeing what ungodly woman can do against your spiritual life? Against your spiritual power? Or oh, what ungodly husband can do? Marital relationship with an ungodly and wicked woman or man can result to spiritual dryness and backsliding. This comes from the spirit of sin in him or in her. Stubbornness, rude language, and outright disobedience and provocative utterances. And these come every day. You are living in the presence of this every day. It can come from his or her alliance with some enemy forces seeking your life. 
they are not for your spiritual in good they want to cause you to backslide they want to reduce you to nothing and so there is a woman and they are liaising with that woman they are liaising with that wife or a husband they are liaising with that husband to make nothing of you a woman was one was speaking she said as for my husband i just know how to handle that one that one is nothing i know how i know how to handle her i handle him can you see that all this may put you in anger bitterness cursing prayerlessness to your spiritual dryness and backsliding you are always saying god will punish you fool idiot bad woman you i slap you now christianity is gone you don't know that they're doing that thing purposely to get you off to kill this spiritual power you, that is spreading in the house they will not go to go to meeting freely because somebody there is praying oh they will not do there's something they want to achieve somewhere you're blocking the way they pass through her pass through her promise her you'll be a rich widow you'll be a rich widow. if it's a man you will marry another man will get you a better woman marriage partner can cause this yes some such wives or husbands may be witches or wizards applying demonic power on you this thing is to wake you up when you see your life frustrating you know how to pray where to go and search out how to pray where to go and search out things for yourself and say maybe is this, is this direction it could be in this direction and be praying and cry out then you will know when these provocations come how to keep yourself otherwise this is raw to spiritual dryness and backsliding anger may be in you you say i will revenge that's what they have been waiting for revenge beat now beat me in fact the woman will come beat me look at me beat <laughs> because it will help her it's going to be very helpful. You have backslidden. And she's the one to first tell you that you have backslidden. Yes. So, this can affect your life. Coming from your husband, coming from your wife, therefore, get yourself. Guide yourself. Tighten your belt for Christianity if you're married to an unbeliever. Number six, bewitchment. Numbers chapter 22, verse 1 to 6. Numbers chapter 22, verse 1 to verse 6. The Bible says, And the children of Israel set toward and pitched in the plains of Moab on this side Jordan by Jericho. And Balak the son of Zippor saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. And Moab was so afraid of the people because they were many. And Moab was distressed because of the children of Israel. And Moab said unto the elders of Midian, Now shall this company lick up all that are round about us, as the ox licked up the grass of the field. And Balak, the son of Zippor, was king of the Moabites at that time. He, he sent messengers, therefore, unto Balaam, the son of Baal, to Peto, which is by the river of the land of the children of his people, to call him, saying, Behold, there is a people come out from Egypt, Behold, they cover the face of the earth, and they abide over against me. Come now, therefore, and I pray thee, curse me, these people, for they are so mighty for me. Peradventure, 
I shall prevail, that we may smite them, and that I may drive them out of the land. For I would that he whom thou blessed, blessest is blessed, and he whom thou cursest is cursed. In chapter 23, verse 7 and verse 23. Chapter 23, verse 7. And he took up his parable and said, Balak, the king of Moab, hath brought me from, Abraham, from Aram out of the mountains of the east, saying, Come, curse me, Jacob, and come, defy Israel. Verse 23. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob. Neither is there any divination against Israel. According to this time it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel. What had God wrought? Now what did Balaam invite Balaam to come and do? Bewitch these people. Such that they would just be looking fools. They will be weak. They won't be able to do anything. If they want to do this, it cannot work. If they want to do this, it cannot work. Yes. I mean, your case might be that of bewitchment, in which you were bewitched. You want to read the Bible, it's not working. You want to pray, it's not working. Ah, uh -uh. Let me kneel down and pray. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh. You jump up from there, and sleep has carried you, say, this is not working. What will I do? You, you, you try it everywhere. You have been bewitched. Now that you are not praying, now that you cannot sit down and read the Bible, now that you are so busy in other matters, which spiritual life are you talking about? Which spiritual life do you have? You have been bewitched. You can't fast. You can't pray. You can't study the Bible. They are keeping you so busy even from fellowship. Some, some powers might be exercised by divination and enchantment against you to weaken you and pollute your Christian life. To make you prayerless, unable to read the Bible. Make you spiritually dry and backsliding. Delilah must have applied bewitchment upon Samson to get him into his state of impoverishment. Otherwise, a woman will say, tell me the secret of your power. You told him something. He didn't, you told him something as if it was a play. You joked with him. And before you knew it, enemies really were gathering at you. And she was practicing that thing on you. She was practicing carrying it out on you. And say. Some sounds, the Philistines are upon you. You jumped up and went and you really saw them. And they started running, running, running. And she asked you another one. You are, you are, you are still telling her. It's bewitchment. Don't you think so? I say, don't you think so? Exactly. Until clearly people will come and run away. People will come and run away. And you still came to tell this woman the secret of your power. And say, let me now die. I've agreed I will die. It's bewitchment. This, this is what is done. It may be your neighbor is casting spell. Someone somewhere is casting spell. Even in the church. People cast spell upon the church so that the church will not be prayerful. The church will be careless and there will be divisions. There will be quarreling. There will be everything. Strive. Moving on. Nobody is talking about God anymore. The presence of God is gone. Bewitchment. Check it out. When you see things like this, cry out. Cry out. Look for another person to handle this matter for you. Go and report yourself. I'm dying. I'm gone. Finally, purposeful rejection of light. In Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16 to 17. 
Jeremiah chapter 6, 16 to 17. Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see, and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. They said, we will not walk therein. Purposeful. This is God. They said, thus see it the Lord. Move to this other church where you can hear the true word of God. I will save you. And they said, I will not go there. Thus see the Lord. Wake up early in the morning and pray to me. The enemy wants to make a fool of you. I want to combat with Satan in your life. They say, God, my eyes are too sleepy. I will not wake up. Purposeful disobedience. In verse 17, And I said, watch me over you, saying, Hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, we will not hearken. <laughs> you see these people? Purposely. The Lord told you, don't marry unbeliever. You said, you will marry unbeliever. And convert her. Oh, and convert him. Where are you going to find spirituality? Where will you find life? You will be dry. Because God will not be with you. You will backslide. Definitely, that's even the way to backsliding. In fact, that is backsliding. Eventually, you will leave the place. The house of God. Because of stubbornness. Purposeful rejection. So, I've told you, we don't want you to leave God. God doesn't want you to leave him. And take care of tons around you. Take care of ungodly friends. The influence of ungodly friends. Yes. Take care of hearing men's voice against the man of God. Against the true church of Christ where you have been drinking clean water. Men can change you. Take care. Again, be warned of unbelief that you come to refuse to accept the light God is given. Be warned against that. Be careful. Be sensitive. Watch and pray concerning your ungodly wife or ungodly husband. Check up on bewitchment that you find yourself, you can't do this, you, can't, you notice that uh -uh, some forces are somewhere. It might be bewitchment. A spell might have been cast on you. Seek deliverance. Seek prayer. Go into fasting and prayer and break that power. God will help you. And then be warned against purposeful rejection of the words of God. Let's rise up and thank the Lord and pray we will walk in this light. We should not backslide. Tell yourself you won't backslide. You won't backslide. Tell yourself, you have learned wisdom. Your eyes have opened. The Philistines will never catch you. Get off from the get off from Delilah. 
Don't allow Delilah to control you. Be wiser than Delilah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your word. God wants you to remain in Christ. I, the international director of Holiness Revival Movement worldwide, want you to remain in this movement. As a member, as a worker, as a coordinator, as a leader. Watch out for yourself. Things that will render you stunted cause you to backslide and get you out of the presence of god
Jesus name we pray Rest up your hands before the Lord Receive power to remain for Christ Receive power for spiritual freshness Receive power to be vibrant in Christ I break every power against your life That wants you to be removed from the presence of God Every bewitchment over your life, blinding your eyes, bringing false information into your life. I rebuke the spirit in your life. In the name of Jesus. May the Lord keep you unto the end. You will make it to heaven. We shall shake hands together at the end. We shall be transported together to heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, 
production and spread of holiness literature and materials for other spiritual materials messages or inquiry contact us on 0813-635-6813 and 0805-683-4323. You can also reach us through our email address, holinessrevivalmovement at gmail.com. God bless you. For God so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe. I'm
believe, I believe, I believe you, Lord, cause you are mine. Hey